Well, I think we are just about ready to get started. Again, once again, my name is Michelle. I'm going to be your virtual experience host with Chef Chris later on. But before we begin, I'm going to go ahead and pass the time over to Amanda for some quick housekeeping notes. Off to you, Amanda. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's event, uh, Sip, Sass, and Super Bowl. So my name is Amanda Patrizzi. I uh, am the, on the marketing team here for Microfocus, now Open Text. Uh, we're so happy that you could join us today. And before we get started, we just have a, a few housekeeping items here. So this session is going to be recorded so that we can send out the presentation after the event. Uh, as you can see, everybody is going to be muted. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation today, please just type it in the chat box and we will get to it at the end of the presentation. Uh, lastly, uh, with this event, we have partnered with the wonderful Hungry Virtual Experience team to provide those delicious cocktail kits for y'all today. Uh, and that's really all that we have. We're so excited that you guys are joining us. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our speaker today, Steve Winograd, who's going to be presenting. Uh, so let's hop to it. Go ahead and take it away, Steve. Great, thanks, Amanda. Hey, everybody, hope everybody's doing good today. Uh, welcome to SIP SAS and Super Bowl. Can everybody see my screen okay? Thumbs up? Yes? Yes. Okay. yes. Fantastic. Okay, good. Well, we'll jump ahead in. And so basically, um, welcome. All right, so what are we going to cover today? So before we get to the real fun, which uh, hopefully everybody has their kits and they're ready to go, a um, little pregame pep talk here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start off and we're going to talk about the migration to Microfocus SaaS. So want you to understand how easy it is for you to get there. We're going to talk about our, our full SaaS portfolio. That's a, what's available today. and Oh, going a little fast there. And we're also going to talk about SAS Flex. So basically, we'll cover how easy we make it for you to get to the cloud, um, everything that, that we have available today, and how we're developing our SAS portfolio. And then, and then we'll go and talk to you about the benefits of the SAS Flex concept. All right, so what you're looking at today is, is uh, when you're on-prem or off-cloud, there's certainly a lot of things that are going on and it looks a little bit like a confused playbook. Um, there's a lot of different responsibilities um, and a lot of overhead and, and there's not really enough clarity or accountability for everything that needs to be covered. So. What you have is basically a lot of players that are running in different directions and you're not sure where to go. Um, too often, things don't get done. So, you know, when we talk about the um, application overhead that uh, within the on-premise, I mean, it, it goes into everything from your application monitoring, your upgrades, your disaster recovery, um, configurations, infrastructure, um, software licensing, integrations, IT staffing. So you can see there's quite a lot of different things and a lot of uh, different competing priorities for, for your teams. Um, sometimes you're not making the progress that you want to make. And what we've seen too many times is you might not have uh, the upgrades occurring uh, as often as they could because of, again, not, not necessarily the priority. Um, there could be security vulnerabilities that don't get addressed. And you're not um, making progress. You're not, you're not making the first down. You're certainly not making touchdowns. Um, what we've seen before is just by moving to like AWS Cloud, there's certainly a reduction in application overhead. Um, but what the reality is, is where you want to get to is with Microfocus SaaS, you, you're basically getting to the easy play, right? So what we've seen is um, typically our customers realize 95% reduction in application overhead by moving to Microfocus SaaS. And how is that? That's because, you know, we have the right team. We have uh, very... Um, 
skilled resources that that their focus is on supporting our applications. And it's a, just a much more complete solution. And so when you've kind of moved the blocking and tackling over to MicroFocus SaaS, what you find is, is you're able to reset priorities um, and increase the value to the business. And we know the playbook as well as anybody because you know we do have that experience. We have, have the right team there supporting it. Um, and again, we're, we're focused on the Microsoft products. So we're able to give you 99.9% .9 uptime and it's a secure and scalable environment. All right, so how do we make this easy? So migrations with SaaS, it's, it's basically an easy three. Um, it's just like kicking a field goal. You set it up right, it's an easy three. So what we wanna do is uh, even before we get to the start, um, you know, we're, we're gonna do pre-planning with you. Um, we're gonna, um, you know, make sure that we understand your environment. And the thing is, is that we've done thousands of migrations and we're gonna work with your team to set it up correctly. So the process is gonna be easier um, than if you were to do the upgrade or migration yourself. So again, that's something that we've seen as a real benefit to a lot of our customers is instead of uh, trying to do the, the difficult work um, by basically getting us involved early in the process and um, understanding the environment, uh, we're going to make it so that uh, you know the right, the right resources are available to assist with you know setting it up correctly um, and and uh, making sure that we can make that field goal. So early on, again, we're gonna we're gonna complete um, an assessment. We'll do an uh, on-premise uh, environment questionnaire. Um, we'll review kind of the integrations, any special considerations, and and figure out the right timeline that's going to work for you. So part of this process is, is making sure that, you know, we take the time and uh, look at the environment and, and look at it as a good opportunity to ensure that the data is cleaned up and, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of ready to go. We'll go ahead and, and make the uh, export and transfer. So, um, Again, this is something that we're going to work with you on a on the right approach, so that if it's going to be phased or if it's going to be more of a big bang, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll work with you to make it easy. Um, building the environments, this is some of the responsibilities that you know we're going to take on. So again, making you know sure that we're doing the upgrade to the latest version and running trials. Um, so, so again, we're 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 sharing the burden, um, ensuring that you know we've have have everything set up, that we're providing the right guidance, so that we can easily make that three points and uh, move that migration to pr production for you. Okay. So what's kind of available in our portfolio today? I think you'll see some of the products that are uh, listed on here are probably familiar. Um, certainly um, we, we have our um, application lifecycle management, our quality center, um, load runner cloud, uh, load runner enterprise. These are things that you're probably uh, comfortable with and, and very familiar with. Um, the other thing to note, though, is there's probably a few things on here that you maybe didn't realize that that we have available and um, you you haven't necessarily seen before. Um, certainly, there's some things like uh, UFT1, UFT Mobile, um, and uh, service virtualization that maybe it's something that um, you were aware that we had, but weren't aware that it was actually available within SaaS. And then we also have a lot of uh, new products that um, what, what you'll notice is, is that what we've seen with MicroFocus as well as um, today with OpenText is, is there's a continual 
development and focus on bringing our customers from off cloud to on cloud. So um, what we want to do is really understand kind of where your investment is today, but also where you want to get to. And the nice thing is, is, is we certainly have the right portfolio to uh, meet, you, meet you there. So in addition um, to, you know, some of the products that, again, you might be familiar with, um, there's also the Value Edge platform, which is our new um, platform. It's AI powered, you know, end-to-end -end value stream management includes uh, multiple modules and accelerators. Um, and basically it's allowing you to accelerate and the flow of value to you know, help the business turning into a digital value stream with maximum efficient, efficiency, visibility, and agility. So it's easy to integrate with existing tool change and design for incremental adoption. So again, all of these products are available within SAS Flex and, um, you know, take the time to understand and, uh, you know, get to know the depth of these pro products because uh, there, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, goodness here. All right, so when you think about SAS Flex, what are the benefits of moving to SAS Flex and, and kind of what does that look like? Um, I don't know if you've, you if you've uh, kind of think about it like um, if if you were to get a booklet of tickets um, that you were able to use during the football season, and let's say it's a twelve game football season. So the tickets that that you have this this booklet of tickets um, is basically what we're going to do is we're going to sit down and and have an understanding of really what your current utilization is within our software products. And um, it could, could today be like Load Runner Enterprise, it could be ALM, uh, could be certainly a combination of different things. Um, but we wanna understand what your utilization looks like today and where, what your kind of plans are going forward. And the, the nice thing is, is um, it might be some things that you're not even sure that maybe you're you're thinking about um, value edge and maybe you're thinking about moving to agile. But the nice thing is 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 what we want to do is kind of figure out what the right amount of tickets that you want to purchase. Um, and then what you're able to do is you're able to go in and you go to each game. So think of it as each month and you're able to use those tickets as you see fit. So as you could say, I want to buy five hot dogs or, or two sodas or a combination of, the, of, of uh, different things, the same thing is with, with our product. You're, you're able to use it for a different combination of products as you need. So if you think about, hey, with Load Runner, um, we're really looking at uh, for this month, uh, we need a thousand web uh, protocols. And then we need 50 concurrent ALM users. You're able to kind of use it in more of a consumption-based model as you need. So as your different demands change, you're, you, you're able to, to uh, use it on the different products. And that can change from game to game. So from, from month to month, um, as your needs change um, and, and there's, there's new things that come up, you're able to address them with those tickets that you have. And basically you're just using those tickets um, throughout the year until you, you draw down on all those tickets. So again, just like purchasing a book of tickets um, for the season, you're able to, to set up your, your SaaS Flex and use it on the products that you need as you consume the products. So if you think about it, um, SAS Flex, it's a lot more cost effective because um, as of today with a standard product, um, you're, you're going to be using it up and down from month to month. And there's certainly going to be times where you're not always hitting that, that maximum capacity. And there's certainly going to be a lot of unused capacity. 
Um, and so like, if you look at our, our example here with the footballs um, in February and September, we see a couple of months where, where we certainly came close to what I would say is our maximum capacity. But there's certainly a lot of area that you see in the dark blue where we have unused capacity. And, and that certainly works. Um, but what we have with SAS Flex is a better way to consume the product because again, it's, it's, it's based on really what we're expecting your, your actual usage to be. So it's no longer just looking at your maximum usage. And the nice thing about it is, is certainly if there's times where you need to um, go up and, and scale up on, on certain testing or, or different things, like if, if you had a need where um, one month there, there might have been something where you didn't even have that capacity based on the standard license model. Um, all of a sudden you can you can um, do that with our SAS Flex model. And again, it's it's drawing that down over time. So let's talk about the advantage of the SAS Flex. So basically what we're talking about doing is is giving you access to our full portfolio of SaaS products within ADM. And it's very easy for you to adopt um, different solutions. So certainly um, we want to see you um, continue you know, with, with your, your current implementation, but we wanna have the flexibility to add to it and to expand on it and to move into um, value edge and other products. Um, so the nice thing is, is, uh, you know, again, you, you have dynamic on demand consumption model. So you're able to scale kind of up and down as needed. Um, we move, remove those perpetual license barriers. So no longer do you have to worry about, um, certain maximums that, that you need to test for that, you know, you hadn't purchased previously. You don't have to go through that whole process you're basically um, no longer bound to those limits with SAS Flex. So if there's some additional, you know, testing requirements or, or, or projects that come up that need to be addressed, um, you're able to, to do that dynamically with SAS Flex. Um, again, we're, we're going to put together a, a simple schedule that gives you access to these different products, um, simple, predictable pricing. So you know, you're, you're, you're kind of able to pick and choose as you need out of the menu so that, um, you know, there, there's a fixed budget for the term of the agreement, but you, you have a complete understanding of, you know, as you're making these changes, you're working with your customer success manager to understand how that would affect um, your, your balance that's on SAS flag. So we also provide metrics, so you have an understanding of of not just um, you know you, you, where you, where you've been and and how you've been um, compared to to what your expectations were. Um, we also have the uh, ability to change your allocations monthly as demands change. So again, you're able to uh, grow. Um, you're able to um, change. Um, as needed on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, you're able to uh, uh, consume different protocols, um, different products, um, and, and different capabilities. So it, it allows you to actually be flexible and to uh, meet the demands of the business. And the additional, uh, to help you get you over the, the line to uh, score the touchdown is we also have a uh, customer success manager who is basically included in, and they're the one who is kind of your focal point. Um, they help you to understand again, those metrics and how you've been using the products. And as well as, uh, you know, what else is available, um, really understanding the use cases that, that, that you, you're requiring and, and how you can um, really change the mix so that, it, so that it meets and exceeds your needs. So the other thing I wanted to introduce today is um, that we also have a SaaS Flex that is specifically focused on value edge. 
So what does this do? Um, this gives you the ability to um, basically have the value edge platform available and it's um, based, it's set up so that um, all of the SKUs that are part of value edge, so quality, agile insights, performance, functional strategy, um, as well as anything that we're continuing to add to the platform um, is, is available in part of the value edge flex. Um, it's available again as a multi-year offering, so similar to SaaS Flex, um, but it it's a smaller subset, and so there there's a smaller uh, barrier to entry, um, different price points, and basically um, we we allow you to um, try out um, any of the different modules as as part of the Flex, and and again you consume it uh, month to month basis. It includes that customer success manager as well. And it's a really good way for you to kind of expand um, the, the value stream management um, so that you're, you're able to kind of grow with it because it's, again, a modular based product um, platform and allows you to kind of make those changes um, and expand as you need into agile, into um, load runner cloud and, and, and our different, uh, modules that are available. Okay. So what's the call to action? Um, after the big game, the big game being, um, when we get started with, uh, putting together the SIPs part of, of, uh, the presentation, um, is what I want you to do from here is, you know, talk to your account team, um, and, understand better you know what's available in SaaS, um, how the SaaS Flex works and, and how we could get the SaaS Flex to work for you. Um, I think it's important to you know drill down and uh, really have these discussions um, so that you you know you, you we we can work together to figure out how this can work for you. Um, do the deep dives into value stream management, value edge with your account team. So, so you know, again, there's a lot of different products that are available, and this is a great platform. Um, AI capabilities. Um, there's there's um, a lot of things that uh, you're going to be able to do and to bring to the business, um, and it's important to understand, um, spend the time. Um, and and uh, see where value edge can help help you um, as well as you know let's let's figure out you know what the right game plan is to put together to move to SaaS. so um, you know again take the time um, and understand and and uh, let, let's figure out uh, how to move forward okay I guess uh, I think I'm done I don't know if we have questions or if, if uh, it's probably about time to move in, but Michelle, I'll, I'll hand it back to you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Michelle and I am your virtual production host for your virtual experience with, drumroll please, Chef Chris Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Michelle, before we hop in with Chef, it looks like we've got a couple questions for yeah. Steve. So I'd like to just ask Steve that one, this one question that we've got in the chat uh, before we get into the awesome cocktail uh, making experience here. So Steve, uh, it looks like um, you've got a question here. If you exceed the flex license ceiling in the contract, can you still scale up? Uh, if so, is it charged monthly for the overage? So that's a great question. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So yeah, certainly um, what you're able to do is is kind of top up. Um, and and what we do is is we'll kind of again, you'll you'll be working with your customer success manager on a monthly basis. And if it came time that, you know, you needed to do something like that. That would be something that that you would do. So you would you would top up, and then you would could be uh, continue on. We're not going to you know shut you off and and say you know what that's it. Um, but but we want to work with you so that you're able to continue to 
you know, take advantage. And that's that's the that's the best scenario where we see. So we're going to allow you to then top up and continue on. Awesome. And and uh, just to confirm, is that a, a separate licensing fee for each of those products? So that would you would just be actually adding dollars to your flex. So like in, in my example, when we're talking about tickets, you would just go ahead and buy another booklet of tickets. Um, you buy uh, more SAS Flex dollars and you could use it any way that you see fit from there. Wonderful. Okay. Um, and so, and so that, that you kind of just answered it with that next question, which was what is Flex? Was that an add-on for an optimized licenses? Okay, wonderful. Uh, and then it looks like uh, Michelle, we're getting a question to ask you just to pump your volume up just a tad bit when when we move forward with you. But other than that, we are good to go. Awesome, awesome. All right, can everyone hear me? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Oh, good. I'm glad Chef Chris can hear me. <laughs> awesome. Well, again, my name is Michelle. I will be your virtual production host with. <laughs> Chef Chris Bassett! If you haven't already, open up those kits, see what goodies are in there for us today. I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you a super cool video that uh, features our chef today, and then we will go ahead and get started. Hey, what's good, everybody? I'm celebrity chef Chris Bassett. You may also recognize me as Candace's husband in the hit Bravo reality show, Real Housewives of the Y'all gonna do what you gonna do, but we good, right? Because you're a real man. Exactly, we good. Today we're whipping up some summer menu with one of our favorites, Bravo Liberties. I've been in the food and beverage industry for over 25 years. I started behind the bar and eventually ended up at the Cornhouse Blue. So, so who does the cooking in the house? Be honest, Ken. Oh, I, I will gladly, openly say it's Chris. I've had the pleasure of curating several cocktail and food menus throughout the DC area. And I'm looking forward to sharing that passion of food, cocktails, and wine with you during your next virtual experience. Without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Chef Chris. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome. Hopefully you got those kits out and we are ready to go. We are going to be making in the sash smash today now smash is a, a very classic cocktail it's most closely related to the mint julep so the first thing that we need to do is make our syrup so you got in your kit one of these nice bags here it's got full of sugar some herbs and spices it's going to give us a really nice simple syrup to go with our bourbon based cocktail that we got today to make the syrup is super easy I got a hot plate here. We're going to do this on the stove. If you don't have a, if you're not close to a stove right now and you'd rather use a microwave, you can do that as well. But if we're doing it on the stove, you're going to need a pan and we need half a cup of water in that pan. So go ahead, half a cup. And you're going to put that on your burner on a high heat, right? Now, if you're going to do this in the microwave, get yourself a microwave safe container and you're going to use that same half a cup of water. Just throw that in the microwave for about a minute and 30 seconds just the water. If you're doing it on the stove top, we're going to take that sugar packet and we're going to dump it right into that water right now. And we're going to give that a nice little stir just to kind of break anything up in here so there's no clumps. Now with simple syrups, they're just that. They're just simple. It starts with equal parts sugar and water. That's your simple syrup, right? And then you can go ahead and flavor those however you like, depending on what kind of cocktail that you're going for, what kind of a flavor. Uh, like I said, in here we've got some cinnamon, some allspice, some star anise. I uh, believe there's some ginger powder in here as well. So that's going to be our syrup. All we're going to do if we're doing this on the stovetop is let this come up to like a low simmer, right? We just want to let that sugar dissolve in there. And then we'll take it off the heat and let that just relax for a little bit. And we'll strain that out. Now, glassware. Typically for this cocktail, we're using it. You would use a low ball glass, old fashioned glass, something to that effect. Uh, if you don't happen to have one of those, if you want to use a high bowl, that's totally fine. Also, if you want to put it in a wine glass, you can do that if you like. Most of us are probably at home or at the office. So if you're at the office and all you can find is a coffee cup, use that too. Totally fine. Again, we're here to have some fun. We're going to make a little cocktail. 
And your syrup, right? Once we strain this out, once, it, once it's done dissolving and all that, uh, if you did the microwave, that minute and 30 seconds is probably close to being up. And if it is, once you pull that water out of the microwave, go ahead and dump the sugar packet into the water and just stir it until all that sugar is dissolved. So you basically don't hear like a grain sound as you're, as you're stirring it. Um, for the cocktail today, we're only gonna use about an ounce of this and half a cup is four ounces. With that syrup uh, sugar, you might get a little bit more, four and a half, five ounces. Um, this will keep in your refrigerator for easily up to a week, uh, probably longer. Sugar is a preservative, so it'll, it'll stick around. Um, I'll probably finish this off the next day or two. I don't like things in my refrigerator longer than two or three days. I don't do leftovers. Um, my wife is the exact opposite. She'll eat things that have been in the refrigerator for three weeks. I don't know. It's her, whatever. To whatever you, whatever you want to do, right? So this one is starting to come up to a slow simmer here. Got some little bubbles. One last stir. Make sure all that sugar is dissolved. There we go. And now I'm just take that off the heat. I'm gonna let that cool for just a moment. And move this out of the way. Now. Every great cocktail has four major components. The most important, obviously, being the spirit, right? That's why we're drinking cocktails for the liquor. So like I said, today we're using bourbon. Um, bitter is another component. And today we've got two bitter components. We'll be using some lemon juice, as well as some aromatic bitters. That's that little jar that you have right here. Uh, bitters, they're kind of what you would consider like the bartender's uh, salt and pepper. So many different flavors and styles out right now. That uh, I mean, you can really literally find anything right now on my bar. I've got aromatic or angostura, right? The yellow top that most people are familiar with. I've got orange, I got pecho, I got chocolate, I've got hellfire, I've got cherry, I've got cardamom, I've got black walnut. The list goes on. There's so many different combinations of flavors, and they all work to flavor cocktails however you like. So we got bitter, we got spirit. We just made our, our syrup, right? Our sugar component is part number three. <clears throat> And then the fourth component is water. And water can come in many different forms, right? Today we'll be using it in ice, right? As we shake that cocktail, it'll dilute a little bit. We'll get some water in there. Um, actual water or, or like soda water or ginger beer or something that has a large water component to it. Does anybody have any questions as I'm going through this? I, I feel like I'm speaking a little fast. I see a few people on camera. But again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to jump in at any point, what, at whatever. We can talk about, hey, we can talk about this cocktail, cocktails in general, um, you know, food as well. Or, you know, if you happen to watch that show that was in my bio, if you got a question about that, you can ask about that too. But anyway, so that's our cocktail. Now, today's cocktail is going to be a shaken cocktail. So we'll need our shaker tin, right? Uh, why do we shake cocktails versus why do we stir cocktails? General rule of thumb is that if your cocktail has any sort of citrus in it, today we've got lemon juice, but lime, orange, grapefruit, whatever. If you have citrus in your cocktail, then you definitely want to shake it. The point to that is because you want to brighten up that citrus note. Anybody drink, uh, put lemon juice in their water throughout the day? As they try to choke that down, right? Get your gallon in, yeah, exactly. You pull that out of the refrigerator, right? And it's, it's pretty tart and it's kind of flat. In a cocktail that, you know, we don't necessarily want all of that sharp bitterness, tartness that you're going to get from the lemon juice. So when we shake that, right, we're agitating it, we liven it up a little bit, makes it a little easier to get down. Um, so that's generally why you would shake a cocktail. Anything else, if it doesn't have citrus, you would generally stir. So take your Manhattan, for example, uh, a Negroni, uh, martinis usually, unless you're doing this James Bond, and then you do whatever you want anyway, so it's fine. Um, syrup, right, been sitting there for a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and strain that out really quickly because we don't want all of those bits and particles in our cocktail. Right? We want our cocktail to be clean, nice and clean. You don't need all of that. So here it is. Like I said, we'll use what we use today. We're going to use an ounce in our cocktail. And whatever you don't use, put a lid on that, put it in your refrigerator. And like I said, it will keep easily, easily up to a week. So there we go. Our shaker tin. Has everybody got their syrup done? For those I can see, thumbs up if you've got it. I see a few head nods and thumbs up. We're good to go. thumbs. Yeah, I like it. So for our cocktail, we're going to take one of those bottles of bourbon. We're using Bullet today. We got some Bullet fans here. Anybody enjoy Bullet? Yeah, I have a I have a love hate relationship with Bullet. Um, I do enjoy bourbon a lot. Uh, I like to drink it mostly on the rocks or neat. Bullet, however, I feel it's got a lot of spice, a lot of character to it. Not necessarily my favorite to drink on the rocks, um, but.
But when creating cocktails, especially like this one, when I'm looking for something that needs a lot of character that can stand up to a lot of different flavors, love bullet in a cocktail. It works really, really well. So also in your kit with your shaker, you should have one of these little things here. It's a jigger. This is our measuring device, right? So we need one ounce of lemon juice. That's the short side. We're going to fill that short side all the way up. There you go, one ounce of that. Now you notice I haven't put any ice in the shaker yet, right? The reason for that is because our liquor, right? Our, our bourbon is room temperature. Our lemon juice, maybe it's cold. Our syrup obviously is hot. We just pulled that off our stove, right? If we put the ice in first and then we go to make this cocktail, we're gonna get a lot of diluted um, ice in there, right? It's gonna start to melt. We're gonna water that cocktail, cocktail down too much. So we always wanna add our ice last. Now, we need one ounce of our syrup. Add that in. Boom. So we've got our liquor, we've got our bitter, we've got our sweet. Now, we also need our bitters, right? Aromatic bitters here. Now, the recipe card says two to three drops. <clears throat> now, normally I would say, yes, let's follow the recipe as it's written, right? First time we're making this. However, that two to three drops really isn't a lot, right? If I do this, it's one, two, three, that's not enough. We're gonna use one full eyedropper. One full eyedropper there. So now we've got our liquor, we've got our lemon juice, we've got our syrup in there. The last thing we need is our water component, right? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add in our ice. And flavored ice, so here we go. And we're gonna give this a really good shake, nice and hard. And nine times out of 10, what we wanna do is we're gonna strain our cocktail over fresh ice, right? We've already beat this ice up. Now we could use that ice, but we want some fresh ice here. We don't want this to, to you know, melt too quickly here. So we'll go ahead and we'll strain this into our glass. <clears throat> and then the last part of any cocktail is going to be our garnish. So in our garnish, we got some candied lemon peels here, right? So go ahead and grab some of that. Go ahead and we'll get that right into our drink there. Now smash generally will have some sort of mint. Now we've got a little bit of mint also in our syrup there. But what makes a smash different from a mint julep is generally the garnish, right? The mint julep is just the mint on top. Usually with a smash, you're going to have some lemons, maybe some berries, some mint also. Today we've got our lemon peel. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our sash, sass smash. It's like a tongue twister, sass smash. Oh, a little sip, who's got theirs ready? I see a few people, so there it is. Yeah, we got, uh, who's that, Keith right there, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he got his taste in. What do you think, what do we think? Yeah. We obviously get that bourbon note in there really strong. We've got some lemon juice. Obviously that comes through tart. And then we get that, that spice from, from our syrup that we just made there. So, <clears throat> excuse, me. excuse me. Thoughts, comments, questions. Anybody got any questions about cocktails in general or this? No? Not seen any questions, but I do have a question. For you yes. guys, are you guys oh, ready? Yes. I have a trivia question. You guys yes, didn't think you were going to be quizzed, but you were wrong. Pop quiz. Whoever can type this in the chat first is the winner of a virtual experience swag kit. So if you like getting mail and you love opening packages, this is your chance. Don't miss out. Get those fingers ready to type. Whoever gets it correct and the first to get it correct is the winner. Are we ready? Yes. What is widely considered as the first ever cocktail ever created? Is it mint julep, margarita, Sazerac, or old fashioned? Let's see, what do you guys think? A, B, C, N, or D? Ooh, we got them flooding in. There we go. I see Are a few ready? up there. And three, two, one, it is 
Zazarak. Zazarak, who was the first one? Who is our winner? Oh, I am so sorry if I mispronounced this. Bahar Jesh Patel was the very, not only was he the first to get it correct, but he was the first in general. Mm. He was ready to go. Congratulations. Congrats. Yes, Sazerac, one yeah. of my favorite cocktails. One of my favorite I'm going to be, I'm going to be sending out a personal DM to you. So keep your chat open so that um, I can get your information to get that sent your way. Congratulations. Back to you. Sazerac, a great, great cocktail. Usually with Peychaud's bitters. That's the reddish one that you sometimes see. Looks like that. Kind of made in the style of an old fashioned as well. A little bit of an absinthe rinse in that one. Who's uh, Who's been enjoying the cocktail? Let's come off the mute and, and tell me your thoughts. Yeah, Chris, man, this is awesome. Um, you know, I think the simple syrup pack with those spices that's like my missing ingredient at home you know what i mean oh yeah for sure so so when you're making syrups at home right and you're trying to get some flavors and, and how to develop those and what's unique and how can i make this different um when i first started out i was like i said we're going to start out with equal parts sugar and water right that's your simple syrup but a great way to like try new flavors is the next time you know you're at the grocery store and you're walking down the tea aisle, right? The whole aisle, floor to ceiling, so many different flavors. You use that same half cup of sugar, half cup of water, make your simple syrup, and as it's hot, steep like four tea bags in there for about seven or eight minutes, and you get some great flavors. I like hibiscus in the summertime for mojitos, works great. Um, yeah, uh, ginger, ginger peach, raspberry, I mean, there's so many different flavors of tea. But mm -hmm. all of your, your dried spices, right? Your, your cardamom, your cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon makes a great simple syrup. Vanilla bean, but yeah, it's a great way to do it. And you can mix and match and play with them all you want to. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I do store bitters at room temp. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. There's actually more alcohol by volume in your bitters than there is in your standard liquor. Most bitters generally are in that 100 plus 110 uh, range alcohol by volume, whereas most of your standard liquors are 40. So yeah, those will definitely stay at room temp. Um, now your wines, obviously, um, we know about those, but vermouth, right? Vermouth is more wine than it is liquor, lower ABV. Um, so your vermouths, you definitely want to store in the refrigerator for sure. Uh, if you happen to be like me and you like a Lule Blanc or a Lule Rouge, something like that, those should also be refrigerated. Oh, man. What else? Um, Shall we get any other questions in the chat there? Uh, yeah, I have someone saying, do you ever add lavender to the syrup? Is that something you'd recommend? Absolutely. I do a great uh, lavender honey syrup um, that goes great with gin in the springtime. Yeah, you can certainly add lavender. Lavender is one of those spices, um, you know, people either love it or hate it. Uh, depends on how many times you've probably been to Bath and Body Works because you know they always pump in the lavender. Is it, that, it, made, <laughs> is it Bath and Body Works or with the better bath, whatever? One of those places. <laughs> Bed Bath and Be Over. That's what my dad. Bed Bath Beyond. That's the one I was thinking <laughs> of. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely want to be careful with the lavender. It's super strong, um, but adds not only great aroma but some flavor. So yeah, absolutely. Goes like I say, goes great with honey and lemon. Yeah, for those of you that, that are cocktail enthusiasts, or even maybe if you like cooking, uh, one reference book, where is it at? Where is it at? I know it's in here somewhere, that I enjoy. Yeah, right here. Um, this, again, this was also something else that I use to you know, kind of develop, learn, because when we're cooking or when we're making cocktails, right, one of the hardest things is flavor profiles and what goes with this and what goes with that. And how can I build on this? So this book right here, it's called The Flavor Bible. I think you can find it on like Amazon for like 19, 20 bucks or something like that. But basically it reads like an encyclopedia. So you can pick whatever ingredient and it'll tell you when, what season that this particular ingredient is most prominent, right? When, when is it really fresh or in season? And it'll list everything that goes really well with that ingredient. Now, if it's really, really good pairing, it'll be in bold capital letters. And if it's just an okay pairing, it'll be in regular font. But one of the other reasons I like this book is because not only does it have food in here, but it has all of your basic liquors, vodka, gin, rum, tequila, whiskey, scotch, bourbon. 
And it also has a few select red and white wines. So again, if you're looking what food to pair with your wine that you're drinking, it, it goes to great reference material uh, if that's something that you're interested in. What is the, uh, the naming it? It's called the Flavor Biter. Yeah, it's a great, I mean, I, I bought this book probably oh, 10 or 12 years ago, and it's probably one of my most used books. Even today, after so many years in restaurants, I still use this all the time, just because it, it's great for creativity purposes and just learning new things. I got a question for you, Chef. What's your favorite cocktail to make? That's a great question. Um, man. Ooh. <laughs> So being somebody who does this for a living and cooks for a living, what's my favorite food? What's my favorite cocktail? Is a very hard question because my palate changes all the time, right? Today, it's probably an old fashioned. Tomorrow, it might be a Negroni. Who knows? It's all about what I'm in the mood for that day. Um, I've been drinking a lot of Manhattans actually lately uh, in terms of cocktail. Uh, I actually just dropped a new YouTube video today with a tequila cocktail, which was phenomenal. Um, but yeah, it just, just depends on the day, but I generally skew towards bourbon. I love a good old fashioned, um, but I've been drinking a lot of Manhattan. So, yeah. Nice. I have a few questions for you from the chat. Jay Kirby wants to know, do you ever put anything spicy hot, like a hot honey in drinks? I've never done a hot honey, um, but I think that would go great um, with a margarita for sure. I think that's everybody's go-to for hot. Is tequila mostly because of that vegetal light uh, flavor, but it probably go really well with vodka also. Um, what I do use a lot is this uh, bitter mints. They're called Hellfire bitters, so they're a spicy bitter. And when I'm drinking mezcal, uh, I'll do like a, a mezcal old fashioned. And for the bitters, I'll use these Hellfire bitters. So I get the smoke from the mezcal, a little heat from these bitters, and that works really well also. And then of course you can always do like jalapeno or habanero like infused syrups and stuff like that. Those work well also. Very nice. And then our buddy Keith over here, by the way, I love your background. You came prepared today. He wants to know what is your favorite comfort drink or food? Yeah, uh, so comfort drink is either a bourbon or a rum on the rocks. Um, that's like my daily drinker if that's a thing. Um, uh, and food, man, food, wow. Uh, in all honesty, it's pizza. I love pizza. I'll, I'll, I'll buy pizza. Like my wife, she travels a lot um, all the time. She'll actually be gone to Atlanta for the next month. So I'll be uh, eating a ton of, of DiGiorno pizza probably. <laughs> like it, it's crazy because I, you know, I cook for a living, right? And, and for so long I've been doing this and, you know, I cook for her and, you know, I cook for my friends, her friends, family. And when she's gone and it's just me, man, I don't want to cook anything. It's literally like DiGiorno, even Totino's and a bottle of wine, whatever. Like I keep it simple when she's gone. So yeah. Um, best mezcal for cocktails. I like Vita Del Maguey. It is one of my favorites. Uh, good price point, easy drinking, not too heavy on, on the smoke. Um, my favorite bourbon, right? Was that the question I just saw up there? Yes, um, favorite bourbon. Yeah, my favorite, this is a difficult question in the sense that I have, so when I go out, especially when my wife is gone, I like a dingy divey bar, right? Um, dim lit, let me just sit in the corner, watch the game, get, get some wings or whatever. Well, they don't have the bourbons that I like because that's not their clientele and their price point. So I do drink a ton of Maker's Mark. I think it's super smooth and easy drinking. However, right now, my favorite bourbon is a Derringer Rabbit Hole. It is phenomenal. It is really, really good. Um, I actually, a buddy of mine, I was in Philly last weekend, um, and we did a Pappy Van Winkle tasting. So we did the 10, 12, 15, 20, and 23. It's good, but I wouldn't have paid 10 grand for, for the five bottles, but, you know, whatever, to each their own. Um, it was good, but I like the Derringer. It's one of my favorites. Nice. And then um, Heidi was wondering if you could name that book once, one more time. Yep. The Flavor Bible. The Flavor Bible. Keith like two says, people that I don't know. Keith says Pappy overpriced. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> it is. Look, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. Right. Bourbon, but, people got I mean, crazy. 
It's a product of marketability, supply yes. and demand. Create a little bit, market it well, make it this cult sort of thing, and now you can charge whatever you want for it And because it's scarce and people are like so enamored by the name, <laughs> they're willing to pay almost anything for it. So, but, I mean, it's good. Like I said, it is good. It is good. It's, it's not cold. worth thousands of dollars, no. Mm -mm. It's $6,000 for a bottle of 23 years, no thanks. Nope. No thanks. In fact, so the point there was like ten of us who did this tasting, and and the majority of us actually preferred the fifteen over the twenty three. Um, fifteen just had a great, great balance. I think the twenty three and the twenty just maybe sat around too long, too long. But again, to each their own. Whatever you like, you like it. I love it. So yep. <laughs> Mike in the chat says, "Are you in Georgia? Thirteen Colony from Americas is very good." I am not in Georgia. Um, however, I do get down there quite a bit. That's where my wife is from. So I'll check it out. 13. Where are you right now? Uh, right now, I'm just outside of D.C. Okay. Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Maryland. So then some Saginaw. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Definitely, definitely good. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. What else? What else you guys got? We got a few more minutes. Did we have, did, were there any questions that anybody had for, for Steve in his presentation? I don't want to leave a little bit of time for that as well, right? We're not here for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was afraid you would say. <laughs> but, but seriously, if you guys have any questions, I mean, feel free to reach out to me and your account team. We want to we wanna certainly just start the conversations. And next time you can even start it with uh, one of these drinks because they are really mm. good. <laughs> well, thank you, Michelle. Michelle has dropped uh, my social media up there for you guys. Like I said, I, I'm pretty active on my my Twitter, my Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Post a lot of food and beverage content, at least on Instagram and YouTube. Twitter is a whole other story, but we'll leave that where it is. <laughs> Twitter's a mess. I a yeah, I gave up on Twitter. <laughs> it's a cesspool. It really like man. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? But whatever. I grew up without it. Don't need it now. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I miss those days of actually having to go in the house to call somebody or just stay outside. I'd rather stay outside. <laughs> see you when I see you. If you didn't catch right? me when I was at home, leave a message. Yeah, it didn't used to be uh, a big problem to leave a message if you didn't answer the phone. So yeah, that's right. Nobody likes to leave. They, they try you like three times. They'll leave a message and then they just start texting. So it's like, okay, yeah, can't get away anyway. Hey, <laughs> hey, Chris, let me let me yeah. get your take on uh, Eagles versus Chiefs. What you think? Oh man, I you know, mm. I, I've been poo pooing the Eagles all year, but they just keep winning. And the Chiefs, everybody thinks the Chiefs are a great team. I, listen, that's why I play a lot of player props. I'll. I'll <laughs> The score can be what it is in the game. I'm just look. I'll look at the guys. I don't know. I, I just hope it's an entertaining game. At the end of the day, I, I really either team is whoever wins. I'll be happy. I won't be disappointed with either one. Do Mahomes over 300 plus two touchdowns. You'll be good. I like that. I do like that a lot. I, I've got a lot, a lot of things with Mahomes already. Him and Hurts actually. Hurts anytime TD. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So that's 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 a lot of my Twitter right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is great. This is why I love. This is why I enjoy doing these classes. You know, we can sit here. Food and beverage, I think, are the great equalizer in life. Right? You get a good drink, you get a good food, and you have people around, and you can just sit there and you can talk about mostly anything, mostly anything, and it just makes for great conversation and, and a good time. Heck yeah, this was so much fun. I'd love to take a quick moment to just shout out Feeding America because for every two kits that were purchased for today's event, we have donated a meal to Feeding America, which is super cool and super awesome. Um, thanks again to Chef Chris for, for hanging out. And uh, if you go ahead and scan those QR codes, you can also head to our, um, our Instagram at VX underscore social. We love to see photos. If you made a really pity picture or picture worthy drink today, post it. We will share it. We will repost. We will retweet whatever it is. All that. <laughs> All that jazz. Um, awesome. And with that being said, I think it's time for us to head out. But 
thank you guys again for coming and hanging out with us. Any last questions before we go for Chef Chris? Huh? Well, I'll take that time to say thank you guys so much. I appreciate all the questions. It was great. Hope you guys enjoy the cocktails. And yeah, like I said, I love talking about food and beverage. So if you ever have any questions, hit me up on social media. I'd be more than happy to answer. Excellent. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you Bubos. so much, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.